issues. You have given your lives to Christ and he has given you this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is to every believer. It is a gift to every believer. So just like we talked about our rites of passages, and what were some rites of passages we talked about? Kindness, goodness. Wait a minute. Rites of passages. Kindness, happiness, happiness. Burn. Oh, oh, Burn. rites of passages like a quinceanera or like, or like, yeah, oh. birthdays. That's a rites of passage. Every day, every minute you breathe, take the next breath. You're getting to a year older. That's a rites of passage. What's another rites of passage? Graduating to a higher class. And we had some today that moved up to the next level. Remember, we go from pre-K to kindergarten. Then we go all the way up to fifth grade. Then we get to go to middle school. Then from middle school, we go to high school. What happens after high school? College. College or trade school. Or a lot of you all say, I get to move out and get on my own. It ain't all that y'all crack it up to be, but okay, amen. After that, we may get married. We may get us a new career. May have a family, children. Remember these rites of passages? Yes. Okay. Now, let's think about what are our rites of passages in Jesus, in Christ. First one is we admit what? We are Christian. That we're a Christian. Now, how do we admit that? That we're a Christian. Mm -hmm. I right, man, come on, brother Robert. I didn't think you was paying attention. You have to be baptized. He was listening. I'm so proud of you, man. Okay, you got to be baptized, and not everybody can go run and jump in that water, can you? Mm -mm. Okay. In order to get to that baptism, you got to what? Be ready. You got to be ready. So when we think about our rites of passage, just like getting ready for that birthday party, we got to have some things together, do we not? So in order to get ready for that rites of passage and accepting Christ, we first got to tell him, you know what? I'm a sinner. I know I ain't doing right. I'm living in sin. I'm going to call it out. I lie. I steal. I cuss. I do these things. And Father, I have lived this way and I'm tired of it because we recognize that living in that sinful life it leaves you with anxiety, running around, watching your back, trying to figure out who gonna fight you next, why they gonna fight you. You end up living in this chaotic world that you gotta get tired of. And let me explain to you all, just living by itself is a job all by itself. It's a rites of passage all by itself. It's tough all by itself. We ain't got to do nothing extra to make it harder. But we'll say, well, I'm going to stay in that life of sin because it seems easier. Because I know it. Maybe I live that way because mama and them were living like that. My brothers and cousins were living like that. Daddy and them was living like that. So that's the life that I know. But when you're thinking about your rites of passage in Christ, he says, that's what you think you know. That's what you think you know. But come to me. I'll give you the Holy Spirit who will guide you into the know. Because when you're living a life where you're living day to day or paycheck to paycheck, that's a stressful life. Because you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, you're juggling things, and you stay distracted. And that's the life that Satan would want you to be in. And you all say, well, Miss T, I ain't got no bills. Okay, well, that's all good. You all are blessed. You just don't understand how blessed you are. But here's the thing. Here's how Satan keeps you young people distracted. <laughs> TikToks? Mm -hmm. TikToking it. He'll keep you distracted. Have you ever gone on to TikTok? And thought, I'm going to watch one video. Mm -hmm. And 30 minutes later. An hour later. <laughs> or an hour later. Okay. You don't think so? Follow me on Instagram. It's I-O-D-O-Yo-Yo. 
another distraction. And you say, well, I only get on that for a little bit. Well, in the time that you're spending on that, what could you be doing? Going outside. Reading. Reading. Going outside. Handling some chores. Be Schoolwork. Getting a better understanding. Building a relationship with, with your family. And building a relationship with God. Sam, with God. The time that we're spending TikTok and Facebook, Instagram, and watching the news, <laughs> reading the newspaper, or whatever. That time, that time there, that's the time that we can be using with God. And you say, well, why? Well, if I'm coming to you and telling you about this gift that God has given you of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to get it unless you spend time with him. You've got to spend time with him. It ain't the time of, oh, I'm going to just sit next to him and say, Father, now, God is good, God is great, Lord, I thank you for my food. That little 10 seconds is not enough. Or, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And Lord bless, Mama, Daddy. Even that minute is not enough. How do we spend time with God? Giving our all. How do you spend time with God? Pray. Say, somebody said it. Pray. pray. You gotta pray. And you know what prayer is? It's just talking to him. Talking to him. Oh, Father, you woke me up today. I don't know what I'm gonna put on today. I don't even know what I'm gonna eat today. But God, you chose me to wake up. Lord, what would you have me to do today? Because there's a reason you woke me up today. Lord, prepare me for this day. Or you're going to be like, Lord, I got a test that, Lord, I didn't, I didn't prepare myself for. Talk to him. He wants to know the desires of your heart. It's really that simple. So when we talk to him, what else can, how, how else can we spend time with God? Reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to go get the Bible and be like, oh, I'm going to start in Genesis. And um, I'm going to find out who be God, who be God, who be God, who be God. I understand that. But I want you to find a place in the Bible and start reading. Even if you start at John 3, 16. And we all know what that one is. Say it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that so whosoever loved him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> now, why would I say start there? Because we know it. You know it. And it talks about God's love. Now, if I start talking about some love, I might have your attention. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to have your attention with some love and continue to read. When you say, well, sometimes when I wake up in the morning, Miss Odalisa, I'll be tired. I don't be feeling it. I don't be feeling grateful. I know he gave me another day. And I, 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 I know I can pray and talk to him, but I feel down. Well, go to Psalms. Go to Psalms. You get to reading in Psalms, you find out about that joy. That joy that he has done, he has given to us. And sometimes we tend to forget about that because we get stuck in ourselves. And it happens, it happens, don't get me wrong, it happens. But you can say, I choose joy, and because I choose joy, I'm going to go over here to Psalm, and I'm going to just see where I can get some joy. Oh! Oh! How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. That was Psalms 133, 1. Now, was that some joy there? Yeah. And that was some good word? That was some unity. Well, she just read one scripture. Yes, I'm going to start out with one scripture. Because for the babes in Christ, you may just need one little scripture. When you were a baby, did your mama hand you a steak and potato sandwich? Uh -uh. No. No. Started out with breast milk, started out with formula. Did it not, did she not? And built you up. Now, now we take y'all to McDonald's and y'all want a seven, 11, and a four. Okay? So I'm just saying. So you build up to it. 
Now, will God judge me because I only read one scripture or two scriptures? No. No, no he's delighting in the fact that you're coming and finding out about right. his word. Does that make sense? No. Now you say, okay, all right, so you already told me I need to pray and I need to read the scripture. What else? How else do I spend time? Go to church. Go to church. Um, I like to go to church, but my clothes don't look right. It don't matter. It don't matter. He don't judge you. Okay, well, my, my kicks ain't right. I mean, I, I got my feet out. Okay. Too. Yeah. Thank you. I like your toes. But just come <laughs> as you are. Way too much, I know, right? But come as you are. Don't let that hold you back. Because those negative thoughts, that's Satan. That's him in there telling you, oh, I don't have a suit. I don't have this. Come as you are. Get that scripture. Get that word. Because the Bible says, for Satan, not the what? Fellowship of believers. And sometimes we have come from our house that you might be the only believer. So you got to come. And there's power in the fellowship of believers. Are y'all following me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to pray. I'm going to read the scriptures. I'm going to go to church. Is there any other way I can spend time with God? Uh huh, praying. Yes, ma'am. What did we do to open up service today? Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Do you know that's spending time with God? Yes. And y'all probably wasn't thinking about it mm -mm. because you're like, well, let's just sing it. Well, who are we singing about? Were we singing about little baby? No. No. <laughs> I mean, hello? We were singing about who? God. God. Jesus Christ. I know. Okay, you all in the back. We wasn't singing about Lionel Richie or anybody like that. Does that help? Okay. Okay. Does that help? We were singing about our Heavenly Father. We were singing about Jesus Christ. And He loves to hear us sing to Him. Well, Sister D, Mr. D, I only know parts of a song. That's all right. That's all right. Hum, hum it, hum until it. you get to the part that you know. Mm -hmm. All right? Because he wants to hear you sing to him. He wants to hear you. He wants to spend time with you. And he needs for you to stop what you're doing. Don't look this way, that way. Don't get on that phone. Don't. Just come to him. Spend some time with him. Now you say, well, when we do all this, I'm starting to unwrap that gift he has already given to me because I've been walking around protecting it and guarding it like that one person with that shell, that silver. Instead of going out and giving it out, I hid it. And so it didn't multiply. Now we're going to learn how to multiply that. Because if we do these things, the Holy Spirit is going to wake up in us. And you said, well, wait a minute. Let me remind us again what the Holy Spirit does for us. The Holy Spirit is the comforter, okay? The Holy Spirit is our wisdom. I'm going to say it again. The Holy Spirit is our wisdom. wisdom. And you say, well, what do you mean? We are young. We are humans. We do dumb stuff. It's like we wake up to do dumb stuff every day. And the Holy Spirit is there to say, hey, no, no, stop. Think that through. Is that the best use of your time? Is that the best thing you can think of? Is that a wise choice? What is the consequences of you doing this? You all heard those voices. You've heard it. And people will tell you it's your conscience. Conscience. Oh, but my gift of the Spirit from my Heavenly Father tells me it's the Holy Spirit. And you say, oh, I do hear that. I do get that feeling that says, mm, better not do that. And some of you all might say, because mama will get mad. Or daddy will get mad. The Heavenly Father won't be pleased. Hello? Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so if we get that wisdom, he also gives us that guidance. And you say guidance. Well, if I have wisdom, why would I need guidance? Dear heart, they go hand in hand. 
Because I can be as smart as I don't know what. I can have a 31 on the ACT and be as dumb as a box of rocks. Have you ever seen somebody that's so smart they dumb? Mm -hmm. It's like the nutty professor or something like that because they don't know how to apply their wisdom. We don't want to be like that. So we need his guidance. And here's the thing about that guidance. You ever gone somewhere and it was new to you and you had to enter into that room and you were the only person. You didn't really know the people in that room. Maybe it's a training. Maybe it's the first day of high school. First day of middle school. You didn't know who was gonna be there. Parents dropped you off. And you get in there and there's the principal saying, okay, look to your left and look to your right and introduce yourself to your neighbor. And you're looking like, what? Oh, no, I didn't come for this. And you don't know what to do. You want to shrink back and you want to go back to that door and you want to text mama and them and say, come back and get me. But you didn't. You stayed. You were obedient. You introduced yourself. And as you introduced yourself, you started looking around and you realize, I'm not the only one. There's other new beings in this room as well. Here's the thing. The Holy Spirit will equip you in positions where you need to know what to say because the human side of you won't say the right thing, won't do the right thing. The Holy Spirit is right there. It will tell you what to say. You ever gotten into trouble and you felt like what you did was the right thing to do? but you got in trouble for it. And so mama and them ask you why you did it. And you're like, how am I gonna explain this? How do I, how do I do that? And somehow you were able to tell them, the Holy Spirit gave you the words to say. When you knew it was gonna probably be losing the phone privileges, grounded, lose your allowance and all those things. And it may have been a situation of pow pows for pop pops, okay? But the Holy Spirit gave you the words to say. It guided you. And you learn from that. Does that make sense, young people? Now, okay, you say the Holy Spirit does these things. And I'm telling you this. This week is your test. Test and see that and know that you have the Holy Spirit already in you. What? My Minister D, I can't speak in tongues. Minister D, I can't bump. I can't dance in the spirit. How are you gonna tell me I got the Holy Spirit in me? Anybody thinking that? Okay, some of y'all might be thinking that. Do you know that bucking and speaking in tongues is not the only test that you have the Holy Spirit? Amen. It is not the only test. It's not the only way. Well, you say, okay, now last week I mentioned to you all the fruits of the Spirit. And some of you all looked a little vague, and I realized we got some newbies here. So, Sister Michelle, we may have to go back over the fruits of the Spirit again for this group because I... I omitted and forgot that some of us are new in here. But how is your kindness? Do you think to be kind? Do you think to be gentle? Think about it. I know you do. Yes, ma'am. I saw you this morning just with Amari. I saw you jump up, got her backpack. Amari's not your sister, is she? No, she's not, is she? But you thought to help her anyway, did you not? And I see you being kind like that. And you do it so naturally that I don't even think you think about it. You just be like, oh, I got it. Oh, let me help. That's a fruit of the Spirit, dear heart. Did you know that? All right? And I was just like, wow, look at that. Look at my girl. And how old are you? Six. Hello? Hello? 
six. Okay? And she did it with no problem. It didn't bother her. She wouldn't like pay me because I got this. She was even packing Amari. Okay? And Amari ain't like. Okay? But she was there. Think about another fruit of the spirit. Um, thankfulness. Or gratefulness. Um, um, Which one you want? Because you're throwing them all gratefulness, out. Gratefulness, <laughs> gratefulness, gratefulness, <laughs> gratefulness. She was like, okay. No, thankfulness. 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 Some people are not thankful until Thanksgiving. And they think it's just over some food. <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing? I'm thankful that we made it today. We got up this morning. We were in our right mind. Not trying to be funny. I walked through a kitchen with a truckload of food. I had a young lady outside <laughs> laughing at me and my baby telling me, girl, what you been feeding them kids? And I had to say, I've been driving through them lesson box lines. Because, Lord, we ain't never had a hungry night. Ain't never had one. And this is in the time of age where big families are not popular. But the Lord has blessed us and kept us. Okay? I'm thankful I got a job. Okay? A source of income coming in. There are many that don't. I'm thankful that I'm in a place that if I don't like my income, income source, I got enough energy to go hustle and put a little more in. There are some that are on limited or fixed income. And they don't want to hustle no more. They like, we going to do what we got to do. I'm thankful that I had some clothes to put on that was appropriate in my size. Because it can be some time because, you know, 1415 found us. And I can be looking like the muffin top girl what the Lord has saw fit, okay? You all think about it. You have backpacks, you have school supplies, you have teachers that care about you. The cafeteria person, you may not always like what they cook, but they prepared something for you, okay? And those of you all who pack your lunch, what a blessing to be able to pack your lunch. And you say, well, I'll pack my lunch, but Mama Neil, make sure I have an extra snack or a dollar to get a snack for when I do get home. Blessings, huh? Let them come on through, blessings. All right, think about those fruits of the Spirit because here's the thing. When you continue to exercise them, I'm going to say it again. When you continue to exercise those fruits of the Spirit, amen, you will continue to see the Holy Spirit grow and mature in you. And you say, well, do I want this wisdom? Yes. Why would I want this wisdom? We're in a world now where people are impulsive and they're not taking the time to think wisely. They just want to do what feels good. And here's the thing with wisdom, it lets you know. We're not going to get stuck on feel good. We're going to do what is good. Okay? Think about some more fruits of the Spirit, young people. How's your peace level? Who's beefing with somebody today? Who's arguing with somebody today? Nobody? Mmm, peace level is all right. You can go to school in peace. You can step outside your house in peace. You can walk inside your house and there's peace. peace. All right, follow me, young people. Patience. Where are we on that patience? Okay, it's a little so-so. Some days, it's better than others. I know I was rushing my crew this morning. But yeah, we gonna work on that one. Okay, okay. All right, self-control. Self -control. Did you say it? I said it. All right, all right. That's a toughie. Self-control. That's not mama telling you to stop. That's you stopping yourself, regardless of who's watching. And that self-control starts with that mouth. Oh, gosh. Because that mouth is a what? Two-edged sword. And my kids know 
I think I, I pray for them daily because they hid it from me. Okay? And and they mouth get south real quick. Real quick. So we prayed for that two edged sword because it's so sharp. Cut people up one side down the other. But we recognize that we're not gonna treat somebody the way we don't want to be treated. Because if there's anybody like me, you hate to say you're sorry because it hurts you. But I know that I have to say I'm sorry because I want my relationship with my sister or my brother because I desire that. I need that. Does that make sense? Okay? That self-control with those ears. You all are probably not paying attention to that. What are you listening to? What are you hearing? Oh, but it's just a song. It don't mean nothing. Well, those songs that play all that language, all that vulgar and all that stuff, gets down in that spirit. It gets down in that spirit and it blocks. It blocks your goodness. Because you think I'm being cute. I'm doing all this and all that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yes, I watched it. No, I don't. Here's the thing. I can't bring nobody to Christ this way. I can't tell you about God's goodness this way. I really cannot. And you say, but it's funny. It's fun. It may be, but it's worldly. And it blocks your blessings. It blocks your gifts. Oh, say it. Say it, because when it gets so filled up in here, it's going to fall out. And it always falls out at the wrong time with the wrong person and with some serious consequences. Okay? Don't believe me? Test and see. Who was the last one getting thrown about that mouth? About that attitude? About the way you were talking? The way you was looking. Hello? I ain't gonna call nobody's name. But you know how it is. So you gotta watch those ear gates. Now, that mouth gate. Oh! What you looking at? You. Oh, what you watching? Oh, what are you seeing? Because that enters into your spirit. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It does. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I'm just a kid. Uh, but the Holy Spirit already said we shouldn't watch this. Move to something else. But we go, oh, but Holy Spirit, it's all right. Let me just watch a few more seconds of it. It's not going to be. And the Holy Spirit like, mm -mm. okay. I'm telling you, no. And then Mama and them come out. And you're about to drop the whole phone or whatever have you. about to tear it up because you knew you shouldn't have been watching watch it. it. And the thing about it is, those things are just a snippet, but they are made so well to get you addicted. To it says, come back and watch some more later. Stay tuned for part two. <laughs> They're like cliffhangers, and they pull you in. That's how Satan does. Give you just a little bit to get you enticed. But what, what, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Put some little catchy titles on there. Come on. How do y'all think Eve got that apple to pass around? He enticed her. Do you think Satan's not using enticement now? Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe it works with one. It's going to work with some more. Okay? Are you following me? Okay. So you say, okay, well, I got to watch my mouth say. I gotta watch what I listen to. I gotta watch what I see. I gotta watch what I do. I got to watch what I do. And I, I show you choice fingers. Y'all know what I mean. All right. We do that in a minute, don't we? Take that tongue out in a minute, won't we? Ugly ways. Uh-huh. And them feet. Where they go? Places Where they go? Places they shouldn't go. Somebody say a cross word to me across the room. Oh, 
You talking to me? So I'm going to go over to it? No. No. It's across the room. Leave it there. I don't have to fight that. I can let that go. They said something about my mama. Do they know your mama? No. Why are you tripping? He said something about my daddy. Do they know your daddy? Mm -mm. So you going to fight somebody over a lie? Let it be. And those that laugh at that lie, they liars too. So we got to watch what we laugh at and what we participate in. Well, man, Mr. D, you just really kind of chopped off all our fun. Did I? Because if that's the only way you know how to have fun, you're missing the whole world. You are missing a whole lot. My neighbor down the street had taken video games and the TV away from her kids. And I thought, hmm, what's that about? Well, I wonder what happened. But you know, it was a form of discipline. But what she found out was her kids started playing together. They were outside playing together. The older ones were actually outside playing in peace with the little ones. It brought back that relationship. So the TV, the video game, cell phone, separate us. And I'm guilty. I'll be up in the house texting my kids. How was y'all day? Really? I text them to ask them how was they day? Uh-uh, come see me. Tell me about your day. Give me three goods and give me two bad. Or flip flop it if you need to. Okay? So let's get back in the community with each other. Pull up off the video game. Pull up off those things. Get some prayer life together. Keep it simple. You'll find sometimes you'll get so into the Lord, you'll follow, fall into him, and you'll spend time with him like you did on TikTok. Let the Lord give you the Holy Ghost dance. That'll be your TikTok dance, okay? Let the Lord give it to you. You ain't got to worry about somebody else making up one for you and you figuring out the steps. Does that make sense? Yes. Young people, the Holy Spirit is already yours. It's time for you all to exercise it. Mama and them can't do it for you. Daddy and them can't do it for you. Grandma and them can't do it for you. Aunts, uncles, no. This is your own personal gift. It is for you to exercise and use. And as we continue to go through the fruits of the Spirit, you're going to realize, oh, I do have that fruit. Now I just need to quit letting it dangle there and grow that fruit. Does that make sense, young people? Yes. All right. Questions? No? He said, no, no, no. I love it. Can we bow in prayer? Most precious and heavenly Father, we thank you as we're wrapping up this lesson on the Holy Spirit, but we are not closing our hearts, minds, eyes, ears, nothing to the Holy Spirit because we recognize you have left him for us and we will use him. We will use the comfort. We will use the wisdom. We will use the guidance because Heavenly Father, we need it in these times. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us this gift and we're sorry we didn't exercise it as much as we should have. Father, we thank you that you are a patient God and you have given us examples of all of the fruits of the Spirit, and we will continue to learn and grow our own fruits of the Spirit. In your precious Son Jesus' name, we say amen. 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 Young people, I thank you all.